Hi everyone, this video will be about Gauss's theorem for gravitational fields. So let's begin. So, recall from physics that if we have a some mass, m0, and we put another mass, m, the distance r apart, then the force will be in a radial direction, and that force is the force due to gravity is this capital G, which is some constant we can look up m naught m this is newton's log uh, newton's um, constant of gravitation over r squared in the radial direction okay so now we can derive from this we can similar to electricity and magnetism if you guys have taken it we can do this that say we have a collection of masses so so we have a lot of masses. Now from all these masses, we put up another mass here. And the question is, what is the what's the force that all these guys contribute from uh, to this guy? From all the, from all these masses to this. Well, we can do this by the following. So this is like M1, uh, M2 and big M, M3, and so on. So, we can say that um, G M1 over R, which is, I'm going to call this mass um, M star, from one, from mass, distance from mass one distance to um, the distance of M2, which is R1 star, square plus gm m2 over r2 star squared plus so on times uh, mass star in the radial direction okay now from this uh, we can actually explicitly say that it's um, the summation of Newton's gravitational constant of gm i r i star squared i equals 1 to how many masses you have in the distribution times the force on the mass you're looking at in a radial direction. So this is more of a general version of this. This is for like two masses, this is for many masses. The distance are away in the radial direction. Okay. So, from this, remember that um, if we look at this chunk, this guy, this is our uh, gravitational uh, field, a gravity gravitational field, which I'll denote as G equaling uh, g, this is for like one particle, m over r squared, the r hat direction. So this is an equation for a, a point in a gravitational field. So a point mass, like, okay. So now let's look at many other gravitational fields such as a line distribution. We say that we have a line. It has some thickness with the line. And we break it up into uh, many parts. And uh, this distribution will probably um, will be denoted as lambda for the um, line for the line map for the line mass distribution, which be in units of kilograms per uh, meter, or, or mass per distance. So now if I want to find um, the gravitational field from this guy, th this is just, um, this is denoted as G, taking little chunks of, of this guy, uh, which I'll call, um, 
DL, infinitesimally these small lengths, will be L will be lambda DL over R squared, R hat. So this is for a um, a line or a, a gravitational line distribution. Okay. Now, if we have a surface, I mean not a surface, but if you have a um, a, sur a surface mass density of the note that sigma, and sigma is in the units of mass per area. Now, for this, this is a a surface density or a surface distribution. So this would be G for the surface map distribution is capital G, the double integral of the of the um, surface density with respect to the volume or the area element over the distance or inches of squared and the radial direction, depending on how you set up your coordinate system. Now <coughs> A volume distribution is G is capital G, the triple integral of the volume of the mass density, which is in uh, rows and units of mass per volume, over the distance squared dV, which where dV is your volume element. So. Yes. Now, <clears throat> let's go farther into that. Let me get a piece of paper. <clears throat> okay. So this is like for some volume element, or some volume. You have your little small boxes of with dx, dy, dz, and so on. Okay. Now for the next one. Let's look at. So, according to Gauss's law, similar to electricity and magnetism, if you've not seen this formula, then I'll be basing the equations from Gauss's law that um, the flux or the electric flux of E through some region, um, through some region R, is E. Electric field dot dA, or if you remember from multivariate calculus, you can write the surface integral as a volume integral. So the divide divergence of the volume integral is del dot e. Um, <coughs> of del dot e um, dB for the volume element. Now. We can do the same. We can do the same thing for uh, gravitational fields. So the flux, the gravitational flux, is the surface integral, the enclosed surface integral of G dot d a. The triple integral of the divergence of the gravitational field d v. Okay. So what does this guy evaluate to? Well, I'll be da. I'll be using it in uh, spherical coordinates. So we have some theta describing some point r away and v. So like this would be x equals r um, cosine v sine theta. y equals r sine theta sine phi, z equals r cosine phi. <coughs> okay. So this would be um, the translation from Cartesian to uh, spherical. So this would be x, y, and z. Okay, so now 
based on the picture, you can derive this yourself that dA, the volume element, uh, to describe some sphere, is uh, r squared sine theta, d theta, d phi, in the r hat direction. Okay, and so let's say that g is a point distribution, g m over r squared. So now if we apply this, right, this guy right here in the flux, the gravitational flux, is the surface integral of uh, g m r squared r hat dot r squared sine theta d theta d phi r hat. Now, geometrically, we want to get this a uh, whole object. So theta would have to range from 0 to pi over 2 to pi. So theta goes from 0 to pi, and phi goes from 0 to pi to 2 pi. From 0 to 2 pi. OK. So now something interesting happens. Notice that the r squares cancel out. gm is a constant. And there's no phi dependence, so I can say that 2 pi gm integral 0 to pi is sine theta d theta which is 2 so this equals 4 pi gm <coughs> so therefore so therefore the flux in the flux of the gravitational um, field equal to 4 pi gm. Close to 4 pi gm. Okay. Now, remember that we can translate this into a divergence, a volume integral, and looking at the divergence of g, so g dv is 4 pi gm. But remember that mass is denoted by mass as the triple integral of the mass density rho, respect to the volume. And since these integrals are the same, they're equivalent, I can cancel them out, or I can ignore them. So these, are, so these guys are equal when the divergence of g So, okay. So when the divergence of the gravitational field equals to four pi g rho. Okay. So. This is uh, Gauss's law for a gravitational field. So, Gauss law. Okay. Okay. So, rho is the mass density, mass per volume, yeah, dimensions of mass. Okay. So, actually, let's do another exploration. So what does the divergence of g look like? Well, the divergence of g, remember from g as just del dot, um, recall that g is uh, for a point, which is, or not a point, but for a volume distribution, which is um, the triple integral of rho, some distance r, r prime being inside, times r hat, r squared db. Now I, I can bring the divergence inside the integral. So so let's see. So the divergence of um, rho with respect to r prime is zero because um, nabla or del depends on x, y, and z, not x prime, y prime, z prime. 
that's zero, so I don't need to include that. So it's really just mass density of the divergence of r hat over r squared dv. But if you if you take that divergence, you'll get zero. But if you take a physics class or some math class, you'll see this actually equals to four pi times the Dirac delta, a three-dimensional Dirac delta function, noted as um, delta cubed r. R, uh, let's see, r minus r naught. Okay. So now I can write this as the volume integral as, um, oops, I forgot to put my g on here. My constant g as uh, rho of four pi Dirac delta function as r minus r naught r. Now, if you haven't taken an integral with a Dirac delta function, I suggest going with it because a Dirac delta function is, like I said, r naught, there's some distribution who has a like, a, like a zero thickness, like it's zero, an infinitesimally high height, and the area underneath uh, or this is one dimen three dimensional, the area under the, the Dirac delta function of r minus r naught is one. But if you have, this is a re review, review, but if you have some function f of x or such that the interval between the bounds is where the delta function is defined, r minus r naught dx, or x minus x naught, then this would be just f of x naught, as long as, um, that you have some f of x and you have your Dirac delta function defined there within the bounds of integration. So a to b and this is your Dirac delta function defined within the bounds of integration. So you're looking at it a point basically. Okay so it's a little bit of review. So if you want to say that um, for three-dimensional cases, one more review is if you look at all space in R3, so this is from minus infinity to infinity, minus infinity to infinity, minus infinity to infinity, of, um, instead of writing del 3, I'm just going to write um, x minus x naught, y minus y naught, z minus c naught, dv, this equals 1. Okay, so that's a little bit of review of what the, the Dirac delta function is. Okay, so now I can write this as, so now by applying this, I can say that by whatever I just showed you guys, that the divergence of the gravitational field this 4 pi g in g rho. So that's another way of deriving uh, Gauss's law. If you just take the divergence of g, you get this at where the Dirac delta function is defined. So that's another uh, derivation. And in part two, I'll be st discussing more about um, gravitational fields. So see you then. Thanks. Bye.